Hi, my name is Brett Spivey, and in today's video, I'd like to demonstrate how to use the NC1 Map Geospatial Portal to discover OGC or Open Geospatial Consortium web services and integrate those into your mapping or GIS software. If you're unfamiliar with the OGC, uh, they work to develop a standardized specification that allows communication between client software and map server software, irrespective of the software vendor. So to start the demonstration, I've already conducted a search for river basins, and in the return list I have a map service that I'm going to use. Uh, I click on the service info link to get to the service info page for this service. And as you can see, I, I'm offered a number of different options on how to preview or ingest this service for viewing. I'm also given some preliminary information about the service, but the item that I'm particularly interested in is the supported interfaces item. And this lists the specifications or protocols that this service will respond to. And you'll notice that the last two are WMS and WFS, which stand for Web Mapping Service and Web Feature Service. These happen to be both OGC specifications. So I'm going to click on the WMS link and show how that's done first. By doing that, I am returned a capabilities document for WMS. The purpose of this document is to provide information about the service. Just as we have metadata for data layers, this can be considered metadata for the map or web service. And the particular item I'm looking at for, or the particular tag, to be able to get this into my client software is the online resource tag. And I want to take and copy the URL that's contained within that. And I want to enter that into my client software. And for today's demonstration, I'm using a product called Gaia. Of course, if you're using different software, the particular steps would be somewhat different. But I'm going to add that URL. And I'm going to name WMS, and I select WMS from the list of OGC specifications. The layer is listed here. If I had more than one layer contained in this service, they would also be listed. And by clicking on that, I get some basic information about this service, just like I did in the capabilities document, along with a thumbnail representation of what the map service will return. So I'm going to add that to my map and click OK. And here is our service. And I can zoom in, zoom out, pan around just like I can with any service. The only other primary function that the WMS affords us is the ability to do a simple query. So to highlight that, I'm going to use the info tool and click on a polygon and get the information returned from that feature. If you recall, by going back to the service information page, this service also supported WFS. And to add that to our software would be a very similar process. I would click on the WFS link, receive the capabilities document, scroll down till I found the online resource tag, copy the URL, go to our client software, and add the layer in there by selecting WFS. And just to illustrate, I've already added that to this here. And as you can see, I get a layer listing along with some summary information. And I will also receive a thumbnail preview of the uh, data. And that highlights the key distinction between a web map service and a web feature service. With a web map service, you're receiving a pictorial representation of the data that you're looking at. So in other words, you're receiving a JPEG or a ping or a GIF image back showing the information you're interested in. With a web feature service, you are actually having the data or feature data being sent back to you so that if you were to open that up using GML, you would be able to see the actual coordinate pairs and topology that is used to build that service. 
So as you can see, I have a thumbnail returned to me, but I've already added that into my map here. And just like with WMS, I can zoom in and zoom out, and I can also query. Of course, if you'll recall, when I looked back to add a OGC layer, there were other specifications that are supported. The process for doing that would be discovering those in the portal would be the same. Uh, getting the information from the capabilities document would be the same. And, of course, depending on your client software, the steps for adding that into your client software would be the same. So that concludes the video on how to discover OGC services and integrating those into your client software. Please check back as we'll continue to add additional videos that highlight functional aspects of the geospatial portal.